Is my is a uh, uh, Dave here? Yeah. Well, send them on in, guys. Don't hog them to yourselves. Don't hog them, guys. Talking no, that's shows. studio. Oh no, there's Dave. Hello. Okay, hey Dave, how are you? Nice to see you again. It's good to see you. Welcome. Pleasure. Yes. I love this whole. Thank you. Bunker. Yeah. So just remember, we keep it clean here just like you do on WFMU. I've, I'm not going to, uh, I don't require profanity. I know you don't. You are you're you run a tight ship over I will, there. I will take advantage of it. I was a part of it. If it's presented to yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. I was talking about this, not to, uh, thank you. No problem. Um, but uh, in, the, in the UK, was I talking about this last night? I was, but I was on, the, on this one station, and they were like, don't, um, before you go on, uh, they're like, just real quick, don't use the C word more than once. Like More than once. <laughs> and I was, so you just get one. <laughs> well it was like, well I don't I don't need the one, but yeah, I'll take yeah, it. Yeah. But they're like, you can say the F and S and whatever. Yeah. But anyway, laxer policies over there. Could you give yours to someone else <laughs> and they get two? <laughs> yeah, or save up. Like yeah. over appearance. Why well, have so, like five yeah. C words yeah. saved you, up? You come back, you're eighty years old. You're like, <laughs> I have 35 yeah. banked. But then I thought it was like standard uh, that you could say all that stuff on the mm -hmm. radio. And then I was on one of the BBC stations mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, just real quick. So no more than one C word and I can say whatever else, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and they were like, no, <laughs> you, can't, you can't say any of those things. <laughs> yeah. Are you sure you were on the radio? It's hard to say. I think, I mean, it seemed like it. Now, your thing translates overseas. I could see that, right? Yeah, I mean, it does. Because for people who don't know this guy. Which is, to to be fair, a lot of, most people. No, <laughs> most people, but people in this world, they know who you are. In this world, but this is a savvy world. You're a stand-up. Yeah, but I'm saying, you know, I, I can walk down the street. Mm -hmm. I, I got I came from Journal Journal Square to this location on mm -hmm. unfettered. Unfettered. And then you got here and you were fettered. Fettered from the second I hit the yes. buzzer. Yes. Yeah. So I offered snacks. Yeah, we got snacks out there. You offered me snacks, I'm offering you snacks. I brought uh cookies in honor of Danny D, just like a symbolic Who's that? Dan. You no, know him I'm as Dan. No, I, just, I just know that would, if I didn't know who he was, what if I truly? Well, I always like, wonder. I don't remember who that is. I'm sure this is a conversation you've had, or uh, but I always wonder, like, because his name obviously is in tribute to your wife, Terry T. Does that uh, frighten you that you're like he's just going to be? Oh yeah, yeah. Outside no, your no, in your driveway or something. Yeah. Like, that part, I don't think he's going to be outside. But there's just a low level of fear with him. Yeah, like like taking a a detour that requires him to drive by your home to get somewhere yeah. nowhere near Let's, your home. Yeah, I'm gonna not think about that. I shouldn't I have brought. <laughs> no, I'm gonna I'm gonna scrub that. Yeah, yeah, no, that's no, for the best. He's he's a good guy. He's I'm, a good yeah. He's a good guy. We tease you, Dan. We we kid out of yeah. love. Yeah, and just wait till the one day he shows up. In full in his devil's uniform, right? Is <laughs> to the to your show on Monday nights. Now your show on Monday. So for people, Dave is a stand-up. Dave is a musician. Your band Valley Lodge, right? Mm -hmm. We have a hot sound. Yeah, <laughs> and you've played with. Uh, you you come out of out of Cleveland. Yes. So you've got roots in the. In the, the actual Cleveland rock world, which is one of the hottest rock worlds that's ever existed. Yeah. Uh, I used to be in Cobra Verde, if mm -hmm. people know that band. I sure. mean, I'm sure people do. Yeah. Um, I had a, bit, a more obscure band called Sons of Elvis, mm -hmm. which a horrible band name. But we, you know, we were just young kids, scrappy youths. Is there a point when you're just like, hey, guys, I, uh, I'm not sure about this band name. Yeah, after right. the second practice. You were just like... We were, but we didn't think, you know, we didn't think that we would leave. The, we were literally practicing in the church basement of mm -hmm. the school that we went to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, grade school. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, we didn't know we'd be uh, catapulted. Yeah. To to we didn't know we'd be caught up in the 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 '90s alternative. Net, sure. The feeding. Friends. Yes. The, <laughs> one of the most frustrating periods of anything ever. Yeah. '90s independent music. Yeah. Because it was right before everybody was okay with making money. It's the final time when it wasn't when everybody's just like, like nobody talks about selling out anymore. Like never ever, right? Do you ever no. hear anybody go, "You're a sellout"? It's like <laughs> no. no, they'll be like, "You're you're selling your thing out." How, how do you do it? <laughs> Can you? Tell no, me? that's like a uh, yeah, an, a notion that doesn't exist. I mean, that's the whole idea now is to there, there is no selling out but everyone you everyone wants to sell everything mm -hmm. yeah but nobody's what are you doing nobody's buying it right well yeah exactly <laughs> you gotta you know i'm an artist that's what i tell myself yeah well <laughs> it's true you are an artist at mr dave hill what if i was like at mr dave hill Thanks for coming by. <laughs> like I was on your show for three hours, and I'm just like, Dave, thanks for swinging by. It's like I an eight-minute appearance. Cherish every moment. Well, it you would know? Be, it's like one of those, yeah, like my thing is more like a magazine, news mag. It's like a Byron <laughs> Allen type. Hey, thanks for coming by. Now we have coming up uh, the Hollywood uh, update. I'd probably walk back to the, the path train <laughs> yeah. and like be texting a friend like did you hear I think it went pretty well but I'm not sure <laughs> it went well it was six minutes long it went yeah it yeah. went so fast but I think it went yeah. well I've never heard him have anybody on that little it was but <laughs> probably like it was a hour. strong yeah. strong six minutes yeah guns blazing by the way you know I you know you could if you feel like it, you need to give me the Heave no, Ho. of course not. No, I would, you know, no, you're no one him. hates Dave Hill more than Dave Hill. You know, well, so I would understand. The way it, ha it has to be like that. Yeah, it goes back to the artist yeah. thing and the Cle more, more specifically the Cleveland thing. Yeah, is that a, is that because Ohio generally has a a second class attitude? The people. Yeah, like right? I I always use this as an, ex as an example, but sometimes I think when I think when I was in Cobra Verde still. We opened for the dictators, mm -hmm. and uh, what's his name? Wild Dick Manitoba. Yeah, he handsome, comes out, handsome, handsome Dick. Dick yeah. uh, Dick Manitoba comes out in a Yankees jersey, and he's like kind of thrusting the logo at the uh, crowd, like yeah. we're from New York, eh? yeah, and uh, like kind of like, hey, we're better than you, and mm -hmm. everyone in the crowd's like. Yeah, of course. <laughs> like, there's no question. <laughs> it and like, uh -huh. it didn't. It didn't seem to be a baseball thing. He was. He wasn't like the Yankees are better than Indians. Yeah. It was like our city is better. And everyone in the crowd's like, "Yeah, what? We know. Yeah. Keep, yeah. Just play the song." Well, first of all, I don't exactly remember him suiting up for the Yankees <laughs> at any point. I don't remember. Remember when I? Well, this, this, you know, not to, I don't mean to drag Danny D back into this, but yeah. I do That's feel right. strongly that no grown man should wear the jersey of a sports team mm -hmm. outside of his own home. Okay. so uh, Own home, free for all. So within the walls of your house. Yeah. It's okay. And wear whatever you want. Yeah. 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 But like to walk around with a thing that says... Like a a a grown man wearing a jersey with the name of another grown man on the back. Uh -huh. As a kid, that always seemed crazy to me. Seemed like weird. even when I was of an age where I worshipped uh, athletes, you know, that six months of my life or whatever, mm -hmm. I thought it was strange that anyone would wear a, someone else's name on their back. Like, have some dignity, you know? Mm -hmm. Don't. I don't okay. know. Yeah. This is my hang-up. It's, it's all our hang up Okay, all right. I've been told there's a... Uh, look, I'm here to give you a, a special night, Dave Hill. <laughs> this is like a make-a-wish so, yeah. thing. Well, no, you're not dying, now. <laughs> you're truly alive. And the first thing I want to do I for you... I have a limonada, which yeah. I appreciate. I didn't mean to treat myself so no, much. but go crazy with that. On the phones right now, uh, sir? Hello? Is this Hello? my dad? No. Hello? <laughs> it's Dave What's that Windorf? goddamn noise? No. Yeah. It, oh man. It's Dave Windor from Monster Magnet. Hey Dave. Oh. Hey Tom. 
What's up? Awesome. How are you? Hey, Dave Hill. Hey, I'm a huge fan. I, I, I don't know, if Tom, if you heard, but I played Twin Earth on the yeah. show last night. Oh, yeah. I heard it when I came in the yeah, studio. Well, you're, awesome. Now, I, I have nothing to say, man. Thank you. Yeah, I love your band. I have fr- from ground floor. Mm-hmm. Uh, amazing. That's, weird. That's, a, that's, a, that's a long way down. No, the, I mean... My I'm, ground floor is a long way down now. <laughs> I remember the Sons of Elvis. I remember... Hearing oh. about you guys when I was touring, in the, and you were talking about the fat 90s before. Yeah. Um, we had a van. Yeah. I mean, it was like I mean, vans, and if vans are us with a lot of money back then. Yeah, we a had... a diff- whole different world. We got... Uh, a, our label bought us a van and road cases, and we were thought we were, were headed... To, we we're like, well, uh, mission accomplished. Yeah. Next Zeppelin. You did it. Here we come. It's, now it's just a matter of... Playing out the string because you—it's a matter of just—it's all downhill. I, well, now, I, now the label actually—they want your van. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> they, they want your van. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, they Dave, your t- t-shirt sales and they own your car. Dave, what's the biggest bus you ever had? Um, when, it was multiple buses. Multiple buses. Yeah, we had two of them. I, I guess I could have had three, but then we, you know, but everybody. We didn't adapt well to the big rock thing, so people got lonely. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like we all get our own bus. But then it was like, well, what do you do on a, you know, yeah. what do you do on the bus when the girls are gone and stuff? Like, where's my buddy? So, but we had two buses, and um, we had them like what they call in the business wrapped with the logo, uh-huh. giant fire, oh you know, and a giant bull god and stuff. And it was, like, it was, you know, it's the America dream. You had to go. I had to go that far, and uh, it was insane. And what years are we talking about? This was like 2000, 2001, right before I just took a break because mm-hmm. things got nuts. Yeah. That was the... But you know what? You're, i got to say, your most recent album is as good as anything you've ever done you, with Monster Magnet, You beat right? me to it. That's exactly what there. Yeah. Thanks, dude. Awesome. Yeah. I, you know, I, I just try to be, uh, you know, you gotta, you got to be true to it. You got to, you know, when the going gets weird, mm-hmm. you know, the weird get pro, like Hunter S. Thompson said. Yeah. Um, it, it's like I ain't getting any younger, so I feel weird and squirrely and old, and that's the kind of music I make now. And it seems to work because nobody's called me on it, you know? It's, I just keep going. Can I tell uh, um, the first time I saw Monster Magnet story? Yeah. It was at the Cleveland Odeon. I don't know, you were playing with Corn. Let me be clear. I was there seeing you, and I did not watch Corn. Oh, that was a brutal tour. No yeah. offense to Corn, except the obvious offense. Oh, I have plenty of offense. But uh, <laughs> I have plenty of plenty of heaps of it. Of offense well, there, on that yeah, tour. Yes, there, yes, I have. How much offense do you want? Well, I can sell it by the pound when it comes to. They're the, the uh, elder statesmen of horrible music now. It was a bad time. Bad time. It it it, it, it bode it bode ill for the future. Mm-hmm. But remember when uh, they came through, it was like, mm, yeah. I don't think things are going to get better, and they didn't. I remember around <laughs> that time, someone was like, "Just someone was like, watch this kind of music's going to catch on." This these, uh-huh. and I was like, "No way! Yeah. No one, the, wor- the Americans yeah. don't have that bad a taste." Yeah. And well, they do. They have much yeah. worse taste, even. But I remember at that show, uh, and I'm sure you did this many times, but you. You, Dave, you you gave your guitar to the audience, and they passed it around the whole floor, and then you kind of summoned it back. And yeah. I was watching this, and I was like, I would be at some point, I'd be freaking out mm-hmm. because there's a, a, literally hundreds of people pawing at, yeah, and tearing apart his strat. I think it was, yeah, and uh, and you you just like summoned it back and remain like. Totally cool and calm. For this one, and it went over on for like twenty minutes, probably. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They would, yeah. It was, it was a big awesome. giant psych, like a psych thing. I was just like, do that, and um, I really just to see, just to prove that people would actually could actually be cool enough to do it, and they did it. I mean, nine times out of ten, they'd get it back. As long as you don't scream at people, mm-hmm. they're nice. Because then, you know, yeah. and conversely, corn. <laughs> would scream at people, and then everybody in some horrible, like you know, lip pierced freak out at the end. You know, kill each other. <laughs> oh, so you have when you because Dave, you come up, Dave Windorf. 
you come up and you're coming from a very a very I don't want to say traditional, but you're coming up from you're not just some some metal doofus. No, I was a grown man. I was like, you know, I was a grown I was like a 32-year-old man yeah. who had already like spent his I was a, when I was a kid, I, the first concert I ever saw was Slade featuring guitarist Dave Hill by the way, oh, Dave Hill. I love Slade. I was yeah. just talking um do you you must know Monty Connor, right? Um so, why do I know that? Not name? key to the story. But okay. uh, he anyway, I thought you might. He I think he founded Roadrunner, but someone told yes. me Yes, yeah, that guy. I know that guy. Someone told me that he was cuz I claim that I'm the foremost Slade fan in North America and then someone was like, "No, Monty Connor is." And I finally <laughs> met him and I I think he <clears throat> d- he might be the foremost, but anyway, mm-hmm. it's rare that you get to talk Slade with anybody. No, I mean, I, I think a lot of people have blotted out memory, you know, because look at those guys and listen to them. It's like, that really happened. Mm-hmm. That's the other... I played Raining in My Champagne, and then I played Twin Earth last night. Mm-hmm. Dude. See? Well, yeah. I'll talk about, I mean, punk rock. It's like, it doesn't get any more punk rock than that. Like, chew on that, man, you know? Yeah. Have some weird gnomish, red-haired guy in a top hat and some, like, <laughs> like prematurely bald guy with long, straight hair going, Nyeh! I mean... That literally, literally, it's like beyond words. Yeah. And that just shaped you forever. Yeah, it was that. It was psychedelic rock, see, and psychedelic Prague, Hawkwind, Black Sabbath, oh, yeah. early, you know, it was all early, early 70s, and then the switch into glam, would mm-hmm. all happened at the same time. And then by the time I was old enough to actually do it, I was at CBGB's with the Ramones, and, and, there, and it all seemed kind of the same thing. It all had... You know, there was more money involved here on one thing, but it, but it was all kind of rock, and it was definitely a traditional, more of a traditional way of doing things than the new metal scene, which was really, really like a sh- like shield, like mm-hmm. one, one of the one of the first hard rock things I've ever seen shield like a bubblegum machine mm-hmm. by big record companies. You know, they shield that like they would shield the monkeys in '68. So. And, and all the kids, they thought it was, you know, cutting edge and blah, blah, blah. I didn't realize they were just buying a big load of, you know, prepackaged crap. Yeah. But anybody who'd been around knew it was like, well, this is like, well, I, I guess it's something. And also, look, the, first of all, the monkeys had top-notch people writing songs for them. And the word was out that the monkeys were, was, a, was a prefabricated thing from the get-go. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true. It was out there. But Corn is going around acting like they're legit. That was such a weird time, man. It was just like uh, it was like right pre Dig, mm-hmm. and uh, you know when when analog had gone as the whole analog world has gone about as far as it could go. Yeah, I mean they had tiny little fax machines and everything was about to go crazy, and obviously kids didn't have the patience for anything else. To, you know they didn't have they didn't have the patience to be challenged by their entertainment. You know, it's just, just give me what I want. Well, what do you want? I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Give, it, give me more, you know? Yeah. And um, so that era of being cool and exploring things and taking your time to figure out what's cool was was over. And everything was getting chopped up the niches and, like, just doled out with giant spoons of money. Mm-hmm. And that was one of the things. I remember it was that and, uh, and, and DJ culture that, you know, was starting to get shoved on every Not shoved, but actually just offered up and eaten up fine Mm -hmm. it just didn't leave any time for for the old folks or the people that like to think about stuff and indie people too uh indie snobs and stuff they all didn't know what to do everyone was everybody was kind of like all right this is the way it's going to be it's like yeah we're bypassing all you guys Mm -hmm. and even i remember even marilyn manson went down in in that uh in that crush yeah everybody everybody when the when the shake-up comes People get shook up. <laughs> it's true. I mean, you can just see guys with guitars at train stations and bus stations waiting to go home. And, uh, you know, and like the new, the new world is here. The new kid is here. And he's going, my father touched my butthole. That's my song. You know, it's a child. Remember, child abuse rock. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was a Papa thing Papa Roach. Papa, Papa Roach. Yeah, and Papa stuff. Roach. They, uh, I, I had a, a very long story about my encounter with Papa Roach. That whoa, I hung out with That's them. That's a sentence you don't hear a lot. Yeah, it was it was the thing where it was it was. I'm, I'm not going to tell the whole story because it would there won't be any show left. 
<laughs> by the time it's done. But I was writing for a basketball magazine at that point, and they asked me, hey, would you like to uh, go to this uh, event over at Chelsea Piers? Uh, the guys from Papa Roach are going to play four contest winners from who won this Jim Beam contest, and they're going to play full-court basketball against Papa Roach and yeah. each team will be assisted by each team had one member of the Harlem Globetrotters on it. That's the most disgusting thing I've ever heard in my whole life. And then Papa Roach watching these four out of shape contest winners play <laughs> the four out of shape guys from Papa Roach and then also two guys on the Harlem Globetrotters just totally pulling their punches now. They could have wrapped the game up in like Two minutes. You can imagine the, the discussion with the with the with the, uh, with the Harlem Golf Trotters. Like, what the fuck is this? Oh, excuse me. Yeah. What is this? What is this stuff? You know? <laughs> yeah, they're just. We gonna play with these guys? Yeah, they're wondering what. Yeah, so yeah, thanks for catching yourself on that. Well, <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, not as good as a win, is it? Yeah. So, Dave Windorf. Yes, I'm. You. Did the, you did the re, the recontextualizing album of Last Patrol. Yeah, I went on, I went on like a mad ringer and started like redoing stuff to suit the new Monster Magnet sound, basically. Mm -hmm. with, and uh, it was really fun. And Came that, up with new songs out of it and the whole thing. Mm -hmm. That's crazy, because I, I went to the studio once. I watched Dave work on the, the Last Patrol album. Oh, wow. It was the craziest thing I ever saw in my life. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. How he was doing the things he was doing. It was like a one man hawk wind. I'm just well, not one man. It was you and the it was Phil. You and yeah, Phil, Phil was there. I watched some video where just even the amp set up it gave me a a condition. Yeah. Oh, you should come on with this sometime because it's, it's it's like you're a fantastic guitarist, dude. How do and, you know um, that? Because I see, I got the YouTube. Oh I can man! See. And um, that's a, that's high praise. It's a you, no, Thank it's you. really really good. I mean, you got that that the surf thing down. That's a hard thing to get. Are you, what you might yeah, be watching it's a hard thing. People videos. don't get that, and that's a lost art. That's going to be like jazz in ten years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where it's like hard rock and and surf and all that. That's going to guitaring. It's going to be such a tiny praised thing that will stand in some weird club. In some foreign city, and people will pay like two hundred dollars to sit at a table to watch us go. And this is a Fender Twin. Yeah. Remember <laughs> these things? We'll roll it out and dust off the cobwebs. And well, we'll I think it's it. it's not. I, maybe this is. It seems like people don't like. It's not cool to be good at the guitar. Like the it, the young kids, mm -hmm. they don't they like. I go to Guitar Center. I'm like, just get out of here. Go practice. Mm -hmm. Come back later. Yeah. No, it's not cool. Nuance is like dead. You know, there's no time for nuance. The whole thing is now is that there is no time to shill yourself and be good at what you do. You either choose one. You either be good or you shill. Yeah. Because nobody cares. Nobody looks that deep. They don't really care if you're that good. Yeah. I mean, I guess someday they will. But right now, the whole thing is just to be out there and be alive and uh, prove you're alive. A lot of talking, man. I mean... Talk has always been cheap, but it's never been cheaper than 2015. That's, uh... Never. Dave, you always... You know what the thing is? You're singing your songs all about, like, the way... Because you grow up, you're listening to, like, Hawkwind sing about just, like, space apocalypse and things like that. Yeah. But now you're doing real apocalypse stuff. Yeah, who needs... I mean, who needs, you know, who needs, who needs the fake apocalypse, you know? We got that in <laughs> movies. You can go see the Avengers or... Or, or any superhero movie or any, you know, fantastic blow em up movie and all that stuff when we've had them for a while, but now they're bigger than ever. Fantasy is, is an indulgence. I just, you don't, it's like, it's not going to mean anything. It doesn't mean anything to me now. Mm -hmm. I wish I could have a fantasy that could take me out of the adventure of actual life, but man, I mean, now this time period is the most insane time ever, but I don't hear it in the music at all. Mm -hmm. That's a weird, like, at least in the 60s and the 70s, it was reflected some way in the music. Mm -hmm. Now nobody, especially top of the charts, nobody's singing about what it feels like to live now. It's kind of bugging me out. I mean, mm -hmm. that's all I do. Sing you know, I, I mean, I'm not trying to be, a, you know, 
I mean, who you got to listen to? about it, but the same thing is like, how can you live in the 20, early 21st century and not realize that things are like crazy and odd and funny and weird and not think about it? Mm-hmm. You, know what you, sh- you know what you should do, Dave? Go to band. Do you ever go to band camp and check stuff out? Oh, yeah. Go, go to, to band camp all the time. Go to apmike.bandcamp.com. <laughs> AP Mike has music up there. I'm telling you, this guy. Dave, this guy is like he's like he's like he's like Leonard Cohen in this. He play. is. It, it is like Leonard Cohen. I heard the thing that, that last summer. What was the thing he released last summer? It was. Uh, what was the thing he the did? The story that, of the kid. Yeah, Michael Perry. He did the it, song. Insane. Yeah. I mean, dude. I mean, it's like. It's, I don't care if he's serious or not. I don't care if that was a mistake. Oh no, he's serious. But do more because that sounds like now. Yeah. Mike sounds really, like it's, it sounds like yeah. a Daniel Close. If if you if a Daniel Close mm-hmm. illustration would sound like something, uh-huh. that's what it sounds like. He's, you know what? You know what? I'm so glad you said that. Doesn't but now it? I'm never going to hear the end of it from this guy. He's going to be <laughs> saying, "Well, Dave said." <laughs> I'll be saying, "Like, hey, Mike, can you don't just drop your can of cores on the floor?" And he'll say, "Like, well, you you heard what Dave said." I'm like a <laughs> Daniel Klaus. Comic it's Daniel comes to life. Klaus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, he's got to do a whole album of her. It doesn't count. That's the way the rule goes. Rules go. I, I mean, think. You, yeah, you have to do a whole album, and then like, and they, so he's got to sweat now. He's got to follow it up. That's the rule. I think so, right? Yeah. Is, you That's hear that, rule. Mike? You got to do an album. You, you can't follow it up. Collaboration. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you go get set it up? Yeah. Why don't you get Monster Magnet to back up AP Mike? <laughs> so, that's that's got that. your yeah. European festivals written all over it. Yeah, I could European. bring him down to yeah, like hostel. Bring him like down to Studio European. Thirteen in Red Bank, where you were. Yeah, it'll um, be like, yeah. I will. You hear that, Mike? You'll be down in Red Bank recording with D- Dave and Phil. But you got to pay. You can't just expect these guys to. These guys aren't like that. That other dude you're taking for a ride with all. Mike's got this guy he takes for a ride, Jesse. He's taking him for a ride. Jesse's like. I think Mike's promising him things he's not delivering. On. <laughs> but what you, a cut! A cut of what? Exactly. A cut of the yeah. stream. Yeah, forty percent is cut of sound. I'll yeah. give. You, I'll give you a cut of uh, of uh, Apple Music. Yeah, Here's your half a cent. Yeah, he's gonna. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna cut him in on all the Spotify money that they get. All that Spotify, man! I got a check from Spotify last month: one hundred and sixty-five dollars yeah. for over seventy-five thousand streams. Wow, that's. that's- that's the actually future. one of the higher amounts I've heard. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's over, dude. I mean, it's like everyone who thinks you're going to make any money, get out, get out of my way, and let serious musicians actually do music because you know it's uh, it's rough out there. Yeah. Well, well, what, well, the, what's the next? Re- when's the next? What's the next thing for Monster Magnet? I'm gonna. Um, well, I need to go on tour because yeah. that's where the money is, and I have to like pay for my house and stuff. And mm-hmm. I'm building the bunker in the backyard. So, um, <laughs> more on that later. The <laughs> uh, so I need to go on tour, and mm. I get these weird things where sometimes the only offers I get are for stuff that was done, you know, 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. So A and M records, which were heavily promoted in the fat 90s. Mm-hmm. It's weird being in a band that's been around for a while. It's yeah. you know you're not prepared. It's like you're never prepared for growing up. Any person, any American kid, isn't prepared for growing up. But growing up in a band and mm-hmm. being around for almost 25 years, yeah. I have to look at these things and like, well, we love you know they're re-releasing. Not having anything to do with me, but they're re-releasing all the A and M records, which mm-hmm. were heavily promoted by giant record companies in the 90s, mm-hmm. and we'd love you to tour that. So I said, you know, but I have this new reimagining of it. And they're like, what are you talking yeah, about? Yeah. Reimagining? Yeah. And it's, it's a psychedelic drivel. Yeah. It sounds like some, you know, crazy old man sitting with a Mellotron and a pack of Marlboros. Yeah. No, they, and, want, they want you to do the other. Uh... So where I'm going to do it, but I'm, I'm turning that stuff inside out. I mean, no, they're not even going to recognize what it's. It's going to be the most fuzzed out, progified, psychified, bizarrified version. I love it. Of Monster Magnet in the '90s, it's going to be more on the on the uh, Super Judge Twinner side of the sounds. That's awesome, nice. And uh, it, it, one way or another, I always manage to manage to like pull something off because in Europe, thankfully, there's people that are into the whole thing. They're like into music for music's sake and not uh, 
But you got to do know. a show. You got to do a yeah. New York show. Dave. We're go- we'll do it. We'll do you it. Got it. Because the because the last tour, you had vocal stuff, right? You had vocal. You were sick. I got the flu. Yeah, yeah I yeah. got the flu, and it went down. It was like take him to the hospital kind of stuff, and it was yeah. bad. So I had to cancel the last week of the tour, which. Bowery Ballroom. I, know. I was City. scared. I had already started pre-gaming for that a week and or two at weeks yeah. in advance. I couldn't wait. Uh, that was such a bummer, and yeah. it was a, it was a real bummer for me because we'd already played all these places that not didn't matter, but mm-hmm. you know the the great the great wasteland inside the yeah. Um, but now it's time to now it's time to for the people who are still holding on to that. you got to let them cash their chips, Dave. Well, I learned my lesson. I think I'll start off in New York this time. Yes, not you know Detroit. I mean? You started off in <laughs> Detroit last time. Yeah, but Detroit's really good for us. Or Detroit oh, really no. is. Oh, no, you go um, to Detroit. I'm fine with you going to Detroit. You yeah, start Detroit and in New York, yeah, right, the last show. They get it after we get it. <laughs> There's a, America's a weird place to tour now. It's a very strange place, quite different than it used to be. Well, wait. You think it's weird now? Wait till you're out on the road with AP Mike and Dave Hill. <laughs> wait till wait, you're gonna be like you're gonna be like. Yeah, I guess it. <coughs> I, I wish I could go back to how weird it was in 2015. No, it's okay. I mean, I actually like that idea. Uh-huh. We do, you know, start, start doing stuff. Right? I mean, it's really got to the point where it's why not the band set up on the on the floor and mm-hmm. have the audience be on the stage because really that's a better allotment of space. <laughs> that would be, you know, yeah. you know I mean, it's just a protest against anything like we're, we're, we're flipping this thing on his ear here. Mm-hmm. The audience sits on stage and tables and the band sits up on the floor and it's like, well, that makes more sense. Mm-hmm. Well, Dave, I love it. I can't wait to see you again. Are you, you're around. I want to, let's meet up. Yeah, absolutely. You hit the road. I'm here. I took the whole I took the whole summer off. I went off the grid. Mm-hmm. No computers, no nothing. I read a ton of books and visited nuclear facilities, um, ancient nuclear facilities from the from the Cold War, mm-hmm. um, on a bicycle. I tell you, you you are that's, pushing the you're it, it pushing was, the boundaries. That's the man. perfect summer yeah, right it, there. It was nuts, but you know why? Because you'd think it's like, well, how long will that take? A couple of days. Mm-hmm. There were so many nukes around here and, and my head got so strange from doing this. Like, mm-hmm. all right, I'm going to go to this place. It's the Atlantic mm-hmm. Highlands, New Jersey on top of yeah. a mountain. And there used to be like NORAD, you know, like you yeah. know, total, you know, strategic air, mm-hmm. air defense. And all the old hulks of the buildings are there and these big pits where nukes used to be. It was truly, truly bizarre. Wow. And then I bought an old Mellotron and kind of locked myself in a, in a shed oh. for a month. Dave, I love it. I love that this is where you're at with the stuff. And I can't wait to hear you and the Mellotron and AP Mike. Dave Windorf plus Dave Hill times AP Mike plus Mellotron. You, you have to be in there playing the Mellotron, dude, because you got to get, you got, we have to yeah. pull off some, uh, like, side two of, uh, side two of Fragile or something, you know? You got to take the Rick Wakeman. Yeah, you got to take the uh-huh. Wakeman thing. The great thing about the Mellotron is that it doesn't shut up until it wants to shut up, and when it does want to shut up, it mm-hmm. goes completely off. So it's this giant surging, wheezing beast, like approximating a string. Mm-hmm. It's like the sound of an electric teardrop. It's the saddest sound, and then the signal drops out, so it just cuts off. So anyone that tries to play it. Mm-hmm. Pro or non-pro always sounds like the same guy. Yeah, it's really That's cool, awesome. Dave. Thank thank you for for calling in and uh, and uh, and, uh, and and giving everybody a treat. I always yes. love talking to you, buddy. You know. Oh, that. thank you too, man. And Dave Hill, it was a pleasure to meet you. I hope I see you again. Likewise, I, I yeah. This I'll put has you guys thrill. I'll put you guys in touch. Yeah, please do, other. please yes, do, because I'm a, a big fan, Dave. Um, I think you're really, really funny. And uh, oh, thank you. That's an, that's uh, an honor. I, I I really truly enjoy people that speak softly. <laughs> well, you and, just hit Easy Street then. <laughs> well, you know why? Because I think it's important. <laughs> the din, the din is getting so loud that I I tend to go for, uh, you know, the softer voices because <laughs> everyone else is making just too much loudness, myself included. <laughs> oh Dave, man, I love you, buddy. I love will, you too, buddy. I will talk to you soon. Right, awesome. Take care. Thanks, Have a Dave. Good night. Bye, okay. Dave. Bye. Right, bye. That was odd. He's he's spending 
his time exactly as I would want or imagine what he's doing. I could cry. Like, it almost seems like you could have written down on a piece of paper, like, what do you think Dave Windorf is doing? You'd be like, probably riding his bike to to, uh, (laughs) decommission nuclear facilities (laughs) and then playing a Mellotron. Oh, man, it's perfect. I don't even think I could have... He exceeded my expectations. Yeah, he's the coolest. I love, I love Dave Windorf. I knew you would. You would. Oh like my to god! Talk to him. I, w- I was, I was tongue tied. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of his and Monster Magnet. Mm-hmm. I was even going to bring up Shrapnel. Yeah, no, he was. He's he's like the real deal. He, yeah, he has walked the walk his whole uh, his whole life. 